Uh, here is a quick video of our programming. And this is just to let you know uh, how to maneuver and how to you know, operate the control board uh, and how to get from your first, second, and third level programming. Uh, this is a quick overview of our control board. Um, you'll see here that this is where your light kit will plug in for your uh, cap and for the light kit on the boom. Uh, this will be your Wi-Fi cards or TCP cards that you would connect to, you know, put them in a network. And of course, these are your three buttons to do any programming. Um, you have your F, your minus, and your plus button. Uh, you also have four layers of programming. Um, you know, one layer, like we say, layer one would be to change it, it. One of the options in layer one would be to change the one of your 23 colors on the cover. Um, layer two would be to change speeds, for instance. Uh, layer three is another one where you can change your outputs when you're talking to um, the other access control systems. And of course, layer four would be to control your connections and your your. your Apologies, guys. I think we may have a, a problem with the video. I do apologize for that, guys. One second. Link and things like that. Um, so the way to get into your first layer would be you would hold your F and minus button for about two seconds, and that should take you in directly to your first level. So hold for two seconds, and there we go. That is my first level programming. Now, if I want to go through my first level programming, you push F to cycle through first level only. And when you find what you're looking for, you'll be able to push plus and minus. And once you select what you want, you continue to push F to get on the way out. Once you see ST, it means you've reached the end of your menu and you saved what you just changed. Now, you want to get to your second or third or fourth level programming. You will begin, of course, by holding your F and minus button for about a second to get the first level. You get to your first level. Now you will just quickly push your F and minus to go to second level. Quick pause, gentlemen. I just wanted to <laughs> clarify in this video I mentioned F and minus to get to the second, third, and fourth level, but it's actually F and minus hold for two seconds to get to first level, and then a quick tap of S, F, and plus, as you'll see in the video. So just wanted to clarify that real quick. I do apologize. Third level, fourth level, and of course you can go through your fourth level or third or second uh, by pushing F, and once you receive, get to the end of the menu, you'll see ST, and you save and exit. And that is basic programming of the Maxima CBS Extreme Board. All right. Uh, I do apologize about the pause in the middle of the video there. Uh, just to clarify more or less uh, the F and minus hold for two seconds to get into first level. And then a quick tap of F and plus to get to your second, third, and fourth level programming. Uh, that is the Maxima Ultra in a nutshell. Um, we will have all of our webinars and technical tips around uh, BFT, you know, uh, located on our BFT America's YouTube channel. So this training that we just had now, we will upload it. Uh, and we will also uh, tune in next week to try to, to go over our speed gates and a webinar for our demos. We would like to open it up now for any type of questions that you guys may have. Um, let me open up yep. my chat here real quick. Yeah, I'd just uh, add to that that uh, hopefully, after you've seen the the uh, the short training session that we've done there, you can see how this is you know derived from installer feedback with the uh, you know the the traffic light function with the self diagnostic blinking lights with the access in from three different spots being you know back the front and the top. So hopefully, guys, that's that's uh, give you some reassurance that when you do give us feedback, we do send that on to our you know to our manufacturing plant uh, in italy and we do action it it's never quick because these things obviously take a lot of r d but we do action it um I i'll kick the questions off by asking everyone in the room is there anything that you don't like about it is there anything that you'd like to see different uh, i actually got one from laptop one <laughs> he asked if there is some sort of battery backup if just in case there's a power outage and the barrier opens itself okay so I can answer that for you. Actually, we, we have a different model, which is due to be released in next, uh, I'm going to say the next eight to 12 weeks. It would have been probably by now if it wasn't for the pandemic. 
which is called the Maxim Ultra 36, and it's, you just add the prefix DD4 on the end. The DD4, in the event of any power outage, will automatically raise the barrier without a need for having a UPS system or any battery backup. It's predominantly used on things like fire stations, car parks. So in the event of a power outage, you don't get a large tailback or stop the emergency services getting to where they need to go. Correct, correct, yep. And then we got a message from Brian asking, what about vehicle detector? Um, well, there is no vehicle detector installed on there, but as you saw in the earlier videos, there is an accessory uh, connection panel at the bottom. So any loop detectors that you need to add in there and wire into our control board for the safeties, uh, we do give you that option to be able to install, you know, the many loop detectors as needed uh, in there or any type of vehicle detection. If you need to put a photo beam or anything like that, uh, you'll be able to mount whatever you need on the accessory panel and, of course, wire it into our control board to work correctly. And also, Brian, I'd, I'd add to that that BFT offer a uh, ANPR, Automatic Number Plate Recognition System. They also offer a tag system, which is like a, a paper tag, which uh, much the same as you get on, on toll roads, which will stick on the inside of your window screen. Uh, there's a receiver, which obviously when it sees it will, will automatically open the, the barrier for you. Any other questions, guys, that we can help you with? Can I, can I ask the group what we what we thought about the the multicolored uh, lights, which will give you some sort of idea as to a, a fault diagnosis? Do we feel that's a good feature? Okay. Next slide, Pablo. So guys, I appreciate there's a lot of information to absorb there and uh, we will upload this. Hopefully we'll have it on YouTube by the end of the day. So fingers crossed. Uh, if anything else comes to you when you re-watch it, please, please feel free to contact either Scott, uh, whose details are on the screen there, or myself, who you can reach uh, at Roy.Kennedy in the same prefix. Uh, we'll be happy to help you as much as we can. Thank you guys for stopping by. In I fact, really appreciate it. If we just wait, we've got a message from Patrick. Oh, oh. Hey, Patrick. Uh, I'm from Brian. So we'll go with Brian's first. We'll, we'll go in the, uh, the, the way that they're, they're falling in. What about sure. con conduit location? Uh, well, the conduits are actually inside of the arm. So as you run through the, the, the architecture of the unit, you know, you run through the, the, the whole barrier arm. Towards the back of the operator, you'll notice there's a bunch of openings on the box for the control board. And you'll be, there's like, I think there's about five or six different holes that you could run your cables through so you don't get too bunched up. So you will have uh, a couple conduit areas that you could run through to get all your wiring into your operator and still have it sealed up nice and tight where the control board is. And I see that uh, Patrick also asked, how do the arms ship? Um, they are actually uh, full, you know, full length and they are shipped, uh, you know, basically, um, you know, they, they wrap them with uh, special cardboard wrapping, you know, they're, they're basically very hard cardboard to keep them from getting any type of dings and things like that. And of course, if you order bigger amounts of, of booms, they'll be shipped on a pallet. And also Brian's asking about the, the mount template. Uh, as far as the mount template, do you asking as far as the sizes or, you know, I, I do know that it's a quick, uh, so if you're, if it's an older Maxima and you're going to put on a newer Maxima, I know the whole pattern fits exactly the same way. So it's just take off and put right on. Uh, no need to put any new anchors in the ground. Um, but as far as the whole template, I can get, I can get out to you uh, as far as the, the whole sizes and the dimensions of where you need to put your anchors. Also, Brian, it's worth mentioning we do sell a base kit for it as well. Correct, yep. Um, so that, that's uh, usually pretty useful. Right, yeah, if you're using a new pad, you know, it's not an existing pad and you're going to pour a new concrete pad, there'll be a base that you actually put in the concrete and then it'll just bolt right up to that base and you'll keep your operator elevated a little bit off the ground. Yeah, okay, uh, Terrell, very good presentation. Thank you, thank you, Terrell. Thanks for attending. 